At the end of the day, every man is responsible for his own life and his own decisions. Doesn't mean that we can't be influenced. And sometimes we tend to think with our heart instead of our head. There's a point in Taylor Mays' career where I think he did that and I think it hurt him. Would his career have turned out differently? Maybe, maybe not, we'll never know. But it's hella interesting and it's definitely a lesson to be learned. In. Also, there's this weird controversy with uh, his 40 time at the combine. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoy it. If you're brand new here, make sure you subscribe for more of these videos. Let's go. Yeah. Taylor Mays was born in Irvin, Texas, but for most of his life, he was raised in Seattle, Washington. His mom was Jewish, so he was raised in the Jewish religion. His dad was an ex-NFL player, so he had a football-themed bar mitzvah. His dad's name was Stafford Mays, and he played in the NFL for eight years as a defensive lineman. And he definitely seemed to have instilled some of that into his son. Taylor Mays always wanted to play football, just like his pop. When he was a teenager, he would watch old film of his dad. And when it was time to do his homework, he would do it with a football helmet on. I can't make this up. But his parents didn't even let him play football at first. So he had to play soccer. The problem was he's Taylor Mays, all right? He was bigger, stronger, and faster than all the other kids. And I'm sure a lot of parents was complaining. Probably a lot of birth certificate check-in, a little bit of heckling. If you weren't big as a kid like myself, you probably still remember that one kid that played in your rec league who to this day you think was too old. He was probably the right age. You just look. <laughs> anyway, Taylor Mays was the right age he was just playing the wrong sport. So when he hit the seventh grade, his family finally let him move over to American football. As a junior in high school, he racked up 124 tackles with five picks. He played wide receiver, quarterback, return punch. He even won the state title in track. He did the 100 meter dash and the 200 meter dash. But like we stated at the beginning, he always wanted to play football. So his senior year, he quit track to fully focus on playing football. He duplicated his interception numbers from his junior year with five picks. Again, his tackle numbers went up 166 tackles with the five picks that we already talked about. I mean, this dude was a beast, man. At the age of 17, okay, Taylor Mays was 6'3", 218 pounds, running a 4'5", bench pressing 225, 21 times, bro. He was 17, bro. But the Taylor Mays that we all know from USC, almost didn't happen. He was originally gonna go to Washington. He's from Seattle and his dad played in Washington. So obviously this was a really high choice for him. Enter Pete Carroll, who is more important to the story than you may know. Taylor Mays loved Pete Carroll's enthusiasm. He won him over and Taylor Mays signed with USC. His favorite players was the late great Sean Taylor and former USC safety Ronnie Lott. So I'm sure that helped too. Now the fact is this, Taylor Mays was a creative player. And just like in NCAA Road to Glory mode, his freshman year at USC, the guy in front of him went down with an injury. In steps Taylor Mays. Once he got the starting spot, he never let it go and finished his freshman season with 62 tackles and three picks, which led the team. He won Pac-10's co-freshman of the year, second team All-American, first team freshman All-American, and defensive freshman of the year. Now by his sophomore year, Taylor Mays had grown to 230 pounds. So people was pretty shocked when Pete Carroll came out and said he was the fastest player on the damn team. Part of the reason Taylor Mays was able to be so fast, even at his size, he was 6% body fat, bro. This dude was a true workout warrior. I mean, by his second year, he had added 10 pounds to his frame boosted his vertical, and raised his bench press. During his junior year, he was a part of what many people consider one of the best defenses of all time. Tons of those guys went on to have pro careers. Brian Cushing, Clay Matthews, Ray Malaluga, Darrell Casey, all them dudes. This team only gave up an average of seven points throughout the regular season. They ended up facing Penn State in the Rose Bowl, and they won by a two touchdown lead. It was in that game that Taylor Mays had one of the most vicious hits in college football history. His 230 pound frame running with 4-3 speed generated so much force that he knocked out the receiver and his own player. I mean, just look at this, bro. It was crazy. After his junior year, Taylor Mays was a sure first round pick, but he decided to return to school for his senior year. He said that it was important to him and his family that he go back and graduate, and that makes sense. That falls in line with 
everything that we've learned about his family up to this point. What he didn't say was that Pete Carroll had been in his ear and basically helped to convince him to come on back for that fourth year. His senior year, Taylor Mays did get more tackles, man. 96 up. Only had one interception. And the biggest issue was that he was projected as a top 10 pick the year before, but now, coming back this senior year, it had really started to show chinks in his arm. He got called out for his lack of playmaking. Again, only had one interception. And then as a senior, he was expected to be more of a leader. Got called out for his leadership as well. That year, USC finished with an eight and four record. Now, even though he did get a pick in the senior bowl, he once again got called out. They said he was stiff in the DB drills and he didn't show natural playmaking ability. His fundamentals was lacking. Cover skills was subpar. This is what they were saying. It was at this point that some members of the media started to say that, yo, we should probably switch to outside linebacker. Now, in the interviews that I found, Telemay says that he didn't have a problem switching the outside linebacker, but I'm just not sure why the switch wasn't made. It seemed like such a natural switch. I mean, this is a guy who was senior year at USC, wanted to play more in the box. Like he openly came out and said, yo, I don't like playing deep safety as much. I wanna play down in the box. Either way, he stayed the safe. Now his combine was pretty damn weird. Like, it was a, he had a weird combine. His 40 times specific. I mean, there's always a bit of a discrepancy from the unofficial to the official time, but his was like all over the place. In one run, we're only talking about one run right here. This one run was clocked at a 4.32, a 4.19, and then when the official time came out, it came out as a 4.4. Now, it's possible that this just seemed like a big deal because you know, Pete Carroll had been saying when he was a junior or a sophomore at USC, he was running the 4 2. So, but he had put in on some weight at this point, some more weight. So, you know, it's possible. 4 4 is still amazing. He was the fastest safety even with the 4 4. But of course, Taylor Mays felt it wasn't correct, and a lot of people felt it wasn't correct. And this next thing, hear me out, check this out. Now, Javid Best ran an official 4 3 5 40. You know how NFL Network uses the simulcast where they show like the two guys running 40 at the same time? So it kind of looks like they're racing. Well, apparently the simulcast showed Taylor Mays beating Javid Best, which would support his 4-2 and the 4-1s that one of the clocks at least, or a few of the clocks said that he ran. Because if Javid Best ran a 4-3 and Taylor Mays beat him, how then did Taylor Mays run a 4-4? doesn't make any sense. It's rumored, and I cannot find proof, but it's rumored that Rich Eisen even said during the broadcast that the system must have been flawed. Now, I'm not talking about during the original run. During the original run, even weirder, Deion Sanders was like, that doesn't look like 4-2. But when they showed the simulcast, Rich Eisen was like, yo, the system, it just can't be right. Like, it can't be right. Now, the reason I feel like this is probably true is because I can't find this simulcast joint anywhere. Not that people didn't post it because those videos have been taken down. They are gone due to copyright infringement. But you can find the raw 40 itself, but you can't find the simulcast one. It's pretty crazy, pretty crazy. Moving on. So Taylor Mays was taken in the second round after having been projected as a top 10 pick the year before. Taylor Mays was pretty upset that he had gone from here to still high, but here. He said that Pete Carroll was a huge influence on him. And he was sure that Pete Carroll was gonna draft him in the first round. After all, Pete Carroll had helped recruit him to college and coached him for four years. After Taylor Mays' fourth year with USC, Pete Carroll left and went to the Seahawks. The worst part about it, the Seahawks had two first round pigs, bro. No, it gets worse. That's not the worst part. Not only did they not take Taylor Mays with either of those picks, they took another safety. Bro, this had to feel like the ultimate betrayal. Now, the safety was Earl Thomas. So come on, bro, it was Earl Thomas. But here's what Taylor Mays had to say. After. He's someone that I've trusted for a long time, been very close to. I put my future in his hands when he told me to come back to school. I just feel like we weren't on the same page for what I needed to do to get drafted where I wanted to be drafted. It's a lot to break down there. He says, I put my future in his hands when he told me to come back to school. That's a big statement. If that's true, I think that's pretty messed up, bro. I know that a part of a college coach's job is to win games, but 
because these kids don't get paid, they should at least kind of look out for their best interest, bro. Taylor Mays was projected as a top 10 pick or even just a first round pick. It doesn't really matter. There was no upside, little to no upside for him to come back for his senior year. But Pete Carroll had lost all them linebackers. He was like, yo, I'm not losing to You know what I'm saying? Now, it is possible that he felt that Taylor Mays could come back, play an even bigger role, and be like a top three pick, but you know it wasn't much upside i mean he was already a first round pick why return for your senior year all right so let the argument in the comment section about how valuable a college degree is begin now <laughs> taylor mays also said that he continually asked pete carroll what deficiencies he needed to work on in order to be drafted very very highly what did he need to do to show scouts that he was the brightest fastest most physical safety in the country to maintain the lofty draft status that he had gotten the year before now once you trying to maintain like i'm not gonna get into it why go back to maintain that doesn't make any sense but pete reportedly told him constantly you're fine then he got in the draft and passed on him man that is cold bro that's cold bloody. Also factor into it that Taylor Mays is from Seattle. <laughs> like, man. I'm honestly not trying to vilify Pete because I understand why he made the choice that he made. I mean, Earl Thomas. But I'm just giving you this from Taylor Mays' perspective, bro. He took it really, really, really hard. Pete Carroll had even invited him to the Seahawks facility before the draft. He actually had to leave as one of the Seahawks personnel let him know that you can't have any contact because it was within like a certain window before the draft. Now, let's flip this around. Here's a look from Pete Carroll's point of view. When it came time for the Seahawks to make their second first round pick at 14, there was no way Seattle thought Earl Thomas would still be on the board. Everybody had rated Earl Thomas as the second best safety behind Eric Berry, who went at five. He went at the top of the draft. Another thing Taylor Mays didn't think about, why the hell would you come out with these dudes? You could have came out the year before. Come on, man. Earl Thomas was versatile, man. He could cover. He could even play some corner. And so Pete Carroll decided to go with logic over emotion which by the way is the same thing taylor mays had failed to do the year before because he should have used logic and came out but he went with his heart and stayed after that teams kept passing on taylor he worked himself into a frenzy as he slid down the board and like we already discussed he eventually went in the second round some people were even saying that Pete carroll had forced taylor mays into a defense his senior year that didn't even show his talent and that that too could have hurt they say he played too far off the ball was responsible for too much ground and had to make up for others mistakes during his senior season in hindsight taylor may says he understands that the defense probably didn't prepare him for the nfl but he was just following what his coach told him to do but he also said that he couldn't argue with seattle's pick because earl is a very very good player and he knew that earl thomas was going to go higher than him but he just wished that he would have known exactly what he needed to work on and exactly what he needed to do in order to be taken higher. This next quote is kind of disturbing, man. Check this out. I should have at least been shown what I needed to work on. Here's my head coach, the person that I trust most, telling me I had nothing to worry about. And then I'm worrying about it when it's too late because I'm not getting picked. Now, when they told Pete Carroll about these comments, man, Pete Carroll looked hurt. And I think he probably legitimately was hurt. He had stated before the draft that it was going to suck having to pass up on, you know, so many of his players. But at the end of the day, he had to do what he thought was best for his ball club. They went into the draft really expecting to pick Taylor Mays, but because Earl Thomas slid down that board, Taylor Mays missed out on millions after not going in the first round and falling to where he did. Obviously, Earl Thomas has been the much better pro as pretty much everybody projected him to be. Taylor Mays didn't turn out to be the pro that we originally thought he would be. He spent a ton of time playing for my team, Cincinnati Bengals, and I thought he definitely performed best when we had him playing kind of like a drop linebacker, like a mid. It's like he's kind of playing linebacker and kind of playing safety. It's like a position that's kind of invented for him. But it's kind of sad, man. Remember his junior year of high school? He had 124 tackles. Well, that's how many tackles he had in his entire NFL career. That's from 2010 to 2015. He never got any interceptions on a professional level. And toward the end of his short career, had some issues with the substance abuse 
policy. So what's your opinion? You think Pete Carroll was wrong in the situation? You think Taylor Mays was wrong for taking it the way he did? You think it's just like one of them situations where you understand both sides? That's pretty much where I'm at. The question is, would Taylor Mays' career have turned out any differently had he left after his junior year and gone higher up in the draft? Maybe it changes his mindset. Maybe he works a little bit harder. Maybe he just goes to a better situation. I don't know. Let me know what y'all think in the comment section. And as always, subscribe if you're brand new. Like the video, share it. I'm out at you next time for the little raps. Wow. Yeah.